Hello everybody, my name is Roman and it's Marketing Watch House and welcome back to my channel. Today we start a completely new series about the SQL and BigQuery for Google Ads. And for those who don't know, BigQuery is an amazing uh, cloud computing engine that actually gives you a very nice and extremely fast access to all Google Ads data you have in your account. I assume you already set it up, your BigQuery account. Uh, if you don't, you can go and register on cloud.google.com. The link is below this video. There you can create a new account that will grant you from three to $500, depending on your location for your first BigQuery and uh, all other services as well account. And you can install, uh, you can create an import from Google Ads to BigQuery. This is another link. The good news, when you create a new account and you get your three or 500 bucks, depending on your location, uh, for your Google Cloud services, you still provide your credit card, but it will not be charged with anything unless you tick the button. And by default, it's unticked. So be safe, you can easily provide your um, credit card account and be, be sure that even if you make something bad, you will not be charged for that. So again, I assume you have a Google Cloud account and you have established a Google Ads import to BigQuery. For those who just done this, you need to take into account that by default, Google BigQuery only will import the data of today. If you wanted to backfill the data from previous days, that was my first mistake, you need to go here to transfers and then you need to ask Google explicitly to backfill the data um, for your MCC account. If you have several MCCs account, then you will have to do it manually several times. So you go click here on more and then schedule backfield. You start the, uh, you pick the date from which data should be available in BigQuery and then you also put the end date. Uh, the same happens if by some mistake you don't have data for today in every, any uh, specific date, you just go here and uh, put today's date and tomorrow's date and the data will be there. Uh, you can see here that I've just scheduled a backfill of the data and BigQuery is a very smart machine. It goes from today and today is 9th of February. So it takes the data of previous date from 8th of February and then from 7th and go on and go on to the first day which is in here, which is in this case 1st of January. Important thing here that it's half of the data, how the, half of the backfield is scheduled, no matter that I've asked for backfield for something uh, about maybe a few hours ago. Uh, when you ask for backfield, BigQuery take a half an hour between the imports and each half an hour you will have another new day of data in your account. So what you need to know about the BigQuery and how it works. Today we're going to talk about a lot of theory and the next video will show you more practice. When you have data in your Google Ads account, uh, sorry, when you have data in your BigQuery account from Google Ads, uh, you are not having it in the same way you have it in Google Ads. In Google Ads, you have everything together, a nice report. This is a campaign name, this is a keyword, this is the stats and the stuff and the stuff. Yeah, that's definitely uh, very, very convenient to use, but it's not very fast and it's not very comfortable when you're trying to work through different accounts. And BigQuery is especially very useful when you are an agency, a freelancer, or you have a startup with a lot of different accounts or keywords. So to make it all convenient and make it SQL uh, classic view, BigQuery splits everything in a very different buckets. If you want to see campaigns, it's in the one bucket. If you want to see keywords in another bucket, if you want to see ads in another bucket, if you want to have a stats for keywords, it's also in another bucket. It might sound a little bit difficult at the, at the beginning, at least it was for me. But then after maybe a few days of tra trying this, I understood that Connecting data together is very, very simple. The best part, when you nail the basic SQL here, you can easily import any data from keywords to search query report and ads to Google Sheets, to Microsoft Excel, to Power BI, to Tableau, to whatever you want, actually, to Google Data Studio. It's so simple, I would never, 
ever imagine. So today let's start with something very, very simple. It's going to be an introduction lesson. So here we have a basic SQL. Here's the console, Google Cloud Platform console. If you go, if you're on uh, cloud.google.com and you can't find where the BigQuery is, just type it here, BigQuery, and you will uh, be redirected to this page. Uh, here's where, where we write our code. The code we're going to write here is just a classic SQL. And when you write any SQL, it's actually very simple. You don't have much uh, special words you have to learn. You don't have any syntaxes that you have to learn. Like It's so simple that even if you have no background of computer science or whatever, you can nail it. Let me show you some examples and then lesson by lesson we go through this and uh, try to understand what uh, can we do here and how it actually works. So imagine I'm going to have some, I don't know, let's have uh, a look on campaigns that we have in my account. Here's the, here we have two type of tables. One is called campaigns and then you have uh, ID of um, my MCC because I connected this on MCC level. And you also have a P campaign. Uh, and again, the same MCC. The difference between one and the second is that when you talk, when you work with a P campaign, you work with a table. Imagine like a huge library, I don't know, FBI library, with a lot of labels, with a lot of stuff in there, with the kind of everything you possibly can find about the campaigns. And here's a schema that describes what data is in this table. For example, ID of the budget, ID of a campaign, um, I don't know, bidding strategy type and name, campaign name, campaign status, a lot of stuff. We can actually have a look what's happening there. We are going to select everything, and this little star means everything, from the table that is in Google, ads, and then campaign, sorry, P, P, campaign. Yeah, that's all, that's okay. Uh, and I push run. This small query that tells me, hey, give me everything from this table is actually giving me a full data that is inside this table. The two things you need to know. First, BigQuery is very fast. If you take, I don't know, 50 gigabytes of the data of data and put on your local machine and try to run the query, it might take a few minutes. In BigQuery, it's just like a second. It's like a speed of light. So don't be scary to work with the big data sets. But what you need to always acknowledge is this information here. It tells you how much data will be queried. Depending on how much data will be queried, you will be billed from your account. Uh, and I mean that you by default have 300 um, bucks on your account. And to go through these 300 bucks, you need to work with BigQuery either very, very bad way which I'm not going to teach you, or I don't know what to do, because 65 kilobytes is so low, you hardly will be charged with anything. But if you have here more than 50 gigabytes, or maybe 100 of gigabytes, you should rethink the way you write your query. This is very important for those who have some experience. If you have no experience and just go through the guide, you will never see here a huge uh, number of data. So here we have uh, the table. This table might be very confusing because it has so many values in it. And it's actually logical. When you go to campaign level in Google Ads, you have the name, you have the start date, the end date, the targeting information, the type of the campaign, the budget of campaign, a lot of stuff, like a lot of this. And all this data should be stored here. So when you actually start to work with a BigQuery, you start to understand that not everything that you use, uh, not everything that is in, is in this table, you actually need to use. For example, you here have campaign status. And inside the campaign status, you see a lot of posts, which might be useful enabled, but you also, by default, because Google Ads does this for you, have a, in information about removed campaign. And believe me, in my experience, I have so many removed campaigns that I don't actually need. And 
I especially I don't need to work with them on an everyday basis. Sometimes I need this, this data. That's why Google Ads give you this information. But on average, this data is absolutely useless. So by default, we have uh, we reduce the information by deleting the data we don't actually need. For example, we delete the post campaigns or removed, or we also can delete uh, data that is not up to date. And this is another very, very cool thing here that we need to understand that uh, each day Google Ads goes to your, uh, each day BigQuery goes to Google Ads, makes a snapshot and put this snapshot here. And this is where we see the difference between P campaign and just campaign. P campaign is the storage where everything is located, whereas campaign is a view. View has no data. It's just a proxy. It's like a border. It's like a library uh, person that actually works in FBI and helps you to navigate through this. It has almost the same fields, except uh, it has two more fields. One is called latest date and another is called data date. What's the definition of this? You can see that all these, um, a lot of dots here, I don't know how to, you call it, it's like a dotty face of a cat or whatever, is actually just a query that is that was written for you. And this query takes information from Google Ads P campaign that we just queried before. And it takes this data, you see the same star as I used before, but then you see the comma and some another data that is added here. First is latest date and it has the 2nd of February and today is the, uh, sorry, it's the 8th of February and I film this video on 9th of February, so the next day. And here we have as a uh, partition time as data date. So what Google Ads actually doing here, it tells us, because we have in this P table, the snapshot of every day, but we don't usually, we don't need the information about, uh, I don't know, a week ago. We need the latest information. What I mean, if, for example, on the 1st of January, I have a campaign and I decided to delete this campaign on the 2nd of January, if I just query the whole table, I will have two different campaigns with the same name, with everything the same, but in one case, the status will be enabled because it was on the 1st January and another campaign, exactly the same campaign, will have the status uh, removed because I removed it on the 2nd of January. So sometimes it might be useful, for example, if you're solving an FBI case, to see what was the status of a campaign exactly, I don't know, 10 days ago or a year ago. But in all other cases, we only need the status, status, the latest status we have. And usually it's yesterday because today's day is not finished. Google Ads gives us, uh, BigQuery gives us the yesterday date. And this is why we have 8th of January, despite the fact that I'm filming this video on 9th of January. So what this campaign does compared to peak campaign, every day Google Ads recreates this view from scratch and changes this date. If here I do uh, where, so it's a filtering, latest date, so the latest date of import when the data was actually added to uh, BigQuery equals data date, I will only have the data of the latest import to Google. And when you work with the Google ads, ex except, the, um, except the times when you work with the stats, because in that case, you actually need the st stats of every day. When you work with the campaign table, ad group data, criteria, whatever, you always add where latest date equals data date, because you only need the data of uh, today, the latest available data. Another important thing is that this table campaign, uh, where it is here, P campaign, is partitioned. Here you see table type, partitioned and partitioned by day. What does it mean? When you have a huge MCC account, like enormous MCC account with a lot of keywords there, with a lot of ads and whatever, each time when Google Ads sends this data to BigQuery, he sends like a huge trucks of data, maybe gigabytes of data, maybe terabytes of data. 
and it would be just unfair for Google Ads to to charge you each time when you try, when you query this enormous table. So what Google Ads tells, uh, sorry, for what BigQuery tells you, BigQuery tells you, I give you the partition field where if you filter by this field, you are not charged for the whole data, but you only charge for the data you filter by. This might be sounds a little bit difficult, but what I mean that if you filter by campaign name, for example, equals BMW, BigQuery still have to go through the whole data set and find campaigns equals BMW. But if you filter by latest day equals day to day, BigQuery does not go through the whole data set. It goes directly to the bucket of this date. So imagine uh, it's like the data is split by the boxes. And when you filter by partition box, that means that BigQuery only goes to direct box. If you filter by any other field, BigQuery still goes through the whole stuff. Uh, it might sound complicated, but believe when I will have more data in BigQuery, you will see that. And for now, what you need to know, because here partition field is partition time, but I'm not using this partition time. And this is why when you go to campaign view, you will see that partition time was renamed to data date. So data date is the partitioned box. That means when I say that latest uh, data date equals to something, I uh, reduce amount of data I'm going through and BigQuery will be much more efficient and will charge you with less money. When I was working with a startup and I was querying a lot of table, like the table was enormous. For a few years it was going and going there and there were millions of keywords. The difference between having this line, this small part of the line and not having it at all was uh, two terabytes of data, which roughly 10 bucks and 20 gigabytes of data, which is roughly a few cents. If you run several queries a day, that will end up 100 bucks a day compared to a box uh, single buck or maybe half a bucks, 50 cents a day. So just remember that if there is table, if table is partitioned and it's usually partitioned by day, like in 99% of the day, uh, cases and most of the Google ads data is partitioned by day and it's always called latest date equals day to date. You just add this unless you work with the stats. When you work with the stats, you are going to filter a bigger period. But again, I will show you later. Okay, that's all you have to know before we actually go and try to query something. So what I uh, what you need to do right now, you need to double check that you can run this query in your BigQuery, that it actually works for you. I will put this uh, line or something like this below in uh, under the video, except be careful, you will have a different ID. If you can't run the query, if you don't see the tables, if you don't see data in the tables, please leave the comment below so we can go through and try to understand what's the problem. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to uh, add me on LinkedIn. If you have any questions, you always can go there and ask them. I do prefer when you ask questions uh, uh, on YouTube because that helps my video to go up. But sometimes you have something that you can't share with everybody. So be welcome, be my guest and always ask me there. And don't forget to subscribe on my Medium because it's also a very helpful place to learn something new. And see you in the next video, guys. Thank you. Push your like, subscribe and bye-bye.